Most people try to keep a good distance between themselves and these little guys. And why not? For an animal this small, they sure do pack a punch in that stinger of theirs. But the truth is, bees kind of got the short end of the stick as far as stinging insects go. Most of the time, people don't even get stung by bees. What stings far more people are wasps and hornets. True bees are extremely beneficial. So much so, in fact, that the entire planet would change without them. So I've always kind of treated them as a welcome sight in the backyard. Sitting at the top of my list of bees is this guy, the honey bee. One of the most easily recognizable bees commonly seen in the backyard, humans have developed a very valuable relationship with this hardworking insect. Aside from the obvious bee-related products such as honey and beeswax, the honey bee provides an invaluable service through the pollination of plants. You see, when a bee lands on a flower, usually looking for the sweet-tasting nectar, the coat of fur the bees have on their legs gets covered in pollen grains. As bees go from flower to flower, looking for more nectar, the pollen gets swapped around, thus fertilizing the plant and allowing it to reproduce. A pretty amazing system plants have developed, huh? Attract insects with nectar and use them as a pollen transport. Well, whether it's measured in direct dollar amount made off of bee-pollinated crops, or it's the unmeasurable benefit of the pollination of many plant species that provide wildlife habitat, it's clear that we'd be in pretty poor shape without the honeybee. Sadly, beekeepers across the country have noticed an alarming phenomenon. Honeybee colonies are vanishing. Called Colony Collapse Disorder, or CCD, this phenomenon is characterized by the sudden disappearance of the worker bees in a colony. As of now, the cause of CCD is not known. There are many theories, ranging from biotic problems such as disease, to problems associated with global climate change, to cell phones, and even alien abduction. Yeah, I'm not making this up. Whatever the cause, the disappearance of one of the primary pollinators of plants is a pretty serious problem, to say the least. Okay, the way I've been going on about honeybees, it may seem like they're the only bees out there. But that's far from the truth. This big, fuzzy-looking bee is called the bumblebee. A close relative of the honeybee, these guys also live in colonies. But their colonies are not as large as honeybees, nor do they hoard honey in such large quantities. Although bumblebee colonies don't survive the winter months and must start over each spring, the bumblebees are able to fly and work at much lower temperatures than most other insects. This is mostly attributed to their larger size and their thick coat of fur, but they also have the ability where they can shiver their flight muscles on their wings to keep themselves warm in cold weather. It's strange to think when looking at these furry insects that they're capable of a pretty powerful sting, and unlike the honeybee, their stingers are not barbed, allowing them to sting repeatedly. But bumblebee stings are rare. This is actually a very docile bee. Even here, where I'm pestering one, I don't get stung. Less can be said about the more sinister stinging insects. Wasps and hornets have a nasty habit of being a bit territorial and often let you know this with a painful sting. They're not all that bad, though. Wasps are actually very efficient predators. Solitary species like this black and yellow mud dauber are welcome guests in my yard. Here, there are several of them collecting mud from a puddle that they will then use to construct their nests. It's pretty cool how they just use their mandibles and legs to roll the mud up into a little ball and then just fly away with it. Mud divers may look a bit menacing, but stings from these guys are rare. They do not aggressively defend their nests the way social wasps like these paper wasps do. Even worse than the paper wasps are these nasty little guys, yellow jackets. They build their nests underground and will rush out to defend it in a heartbeat. They're the terror of my backyard, striking fear in the heart of anyone brave enough to try to mow the lawn. Just in the short time I spent filming these guys, I got stung. Here's the stinger from one of the ones that stung me. It's amazing that such a tiny thing can cause so much pain. Terrified of them or not, bees and wasps are an important part of the ecosystem and should be treated with a great deal of respect. The structure and complexity of bee colonies can only be rivaled by one other type of insect.
Small, strong, and amazingly organized, it's easy to see why ants are some of the most successful insects around. Living in colonies that can range from less than 50 individuals to large colonies consisting of millions of ants and forming a complex system of roles within the colony, ants are extremely resourceful. They can be found on every continent except Antarctica and have adapted to live in almost every environment, exploiting a wide range of food resources. Their adaptability combined with the ability to solve complex problems and communicate between individuals makes them a force to be reckoned with in the animal kingdom. Ants evolved from wasp-like ancestors, and the similarities between them can still be seen today. Many ant species still retain the ability to inflict a nasty sting. Ants have what I like to consider the staple insect body. The node-like structure of the major body parts makes them very easy to distinguish from one another. That's why I used them as an example when we were looking at the different segments of the insect body. Although most ant species have this similar body structure, they're an incredibly diverse group of insects with over 12,000 known species. Within each colony, the ants diversify further through division of labor. There are three basic subgroups of ants within the colony. The queen ant, the worker ants, and the male ants. The queen can live up to 30 years depending on the species, making them the longest lived of all insects. Her sole job in the colony is to lay eggs. Without the queen, the colony would die off. The worker ants are the ones you see most often. They do everything from tending the queen and the young, to enlarging the nest, to foraging, and even defense. Workers are by far the most numerous in the colony, and they're extremely important. Although all of the workers in the colony are females, none of them can actually reproduce. The only fertile ants in the entire colony are the queen and the males. The male ants, being the only males in the whole colony, have only one job. Mate with the queen. Their lifespan is shorter than the rest of the ants in the colony, lasting only about one season. Keeping a colony of ants fed is no small task. Different species of ants have developed many different ways of feeding the colony. Some are predatory, like these ants that are invading a termite colony. These termites are being carried off by the worker ants to serve as live food for the colony. Other species have developed more unique ways of keeping the colony fed. These leaf cutter ants use chunks of leaves to grow a very specific type of fungus that they feed on. Most ants are generalists though, eating everything from dead insects like this yellow jacket or this moth, to food that people drop or leave lying around. Ant colonies are sometimes referred to as a superorganism because the ants operate as a single unit, all working together for the good of the colony. Each different type of ant in the colony has to depend on the others. None of them can live without the cooperation of the rest, making this truly an amazing insect. 